Hey, hey, hey. How y'all doing today? We got two cameras going, so I'll be looking back and forth. But you all come on in and let's have this conversation. <clears throat> today we are talking about the film Waco. Um, it's on Netflix and it's based on a true story. How many of you all have seen it? Uh, if you haven't seen it, you may want to uh, log off because it's spoiler alert alerts. And so we're going to be breaking down what happened in Waco. Um, hey, Lawanda. Who else? Y'all let me know y'all here. And I want you all, if you have seen the film, the series is a six part series. I definitely want you all to uh, give me feedback. Add your commentary, um, join in on the conversation because <clears throat> I'm gonna break down each episode. I got notes here, uh, I did some research, uh, I read different articles, I watched old uh, ABC uh, interviews. Uh, so thank you, girl. I just I'm not feeling my best. I went and just threw something on so I won't be looking so dead on here, okay. <clears throat> So, episode one starts off with a standoff um, at Ruby Ridge. And the standoff is between uh, Randy Weaver, a former U.S. Army engineer. And during the standoff, uh, ATF, which stands for Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms uh, Agents, they actually shoot... Um, Randy's wife and his child. And so because they shoot his wife and his child, the member of Congress are thinking about taking the fund away from ATF. And so um, ATF is trying to prove themselves. And so this guy goes and visit uh, I guess the head of ATF and tells them that they have a lead uh, about some firearms being built um, at um, where David Koresh and his compound in, compound is in Waco, Texas. And so he said he's going to set up a uh, surveillance team. And he told him he's going to have the team ready next week. And the guy told him that to start that night. So they rushed to judgment so that they could get more fun to improve their points. <clears throat> hey, make sure you all tune in, comment. Hey, Dennis. Hey, Brother Samuel. Hey, Avis girl. Um, and so it was a 91, a 51-day standoff um, at this compound. So David is recruit. They show David at the beginning recruit people. Uh, he recruit this guy. His, his name is also David uh, Thibodeau. So they call him Thibodeau. Uh, he plays in the band and David recruit him to come stay at the compound. And once he's at the compound, David tells him that um, they just don't let anybody stay there. That they, they have to be a believer. And so Tipido ends up staying there at the compound. And um, David, <laughs> one thing that is strange about this show, well, strange about what happened is uh, David calls himself um, taking on the burden of sex for any, everybody at the compound. Like you don't, even if you're married, they all sleep with David. The wives of other uh, men only can sleep with David. They have a floor where men is on one floor and the women and children on another floor. No men except for David is allowed on the women's floor. And so episode one ends with the baby being born by one of David's friends. I think his name is Steve. And Steve is uh, conflicted about, you know, his wife having to date a baby by David, and he's thinking about leaving, but he doesn't leave. So episode two starts off with um, 
David seeing new neighbors across from the compound. And so they go and visit the new neighbors. And David asks him a question about being a rancher because the guy claimed that they are a rancher. But <clears throat> he find out that they're not new neighbors. They actually are uh, undercover ATF or FBI agents. Um, this, this series, they did a pretty good job. Uh, telling the truth with this series. Like I said, I did some research. I watched actual footage and it lines up with what they presented during this series. Uh, and this series was based on two books, uh, Waco, A Survivor Story by David Thibodeau. He was one of nine of the survivors. And the other book that the FBI negotiator wrote was Stalling for Time, My Life as a FBI Hostage Negotiator by Gary Nishner. I can't pronounce his last name. Okay, so in episode two, David invites the guy, the ATF agent, who's his neighbor, to come to the compound. And so David's up preaching about the seven seals in the book of Revelation. And he said that they are going to be the fourth seal has already happened and that they're going to open the fifth seal. And in the middle of his sermon, David said that somebody has broken a rule and they must be punished. And then he tells everybody to follow him. He had this stick in his hand like he's about to beat somebody. And he goes in the freezer and in the freezer, all these guns are stockpiled there in the freezer. And so he comes out the freezer with some ice cream. And he was like, who did? Who ate the ice cream? And this little boy comes forward and said, I ate the ice cream. And he said, you must be punished. And he said, your sins is all of our sins. And so he gave everybody ice cream. And I think that first thing that touches the ATF agent that's present watching all of this. <clears throat> because for the longest they have, they portrayed... David being this mean uh, cult leader, and we don't get that at all from this film. Um, David is talking to the ATF agent. The ATF agent is open up to David about his mother and having problems with his mother. And David, when David asked him, what's the shortest verse in the Bible? I answered that Jesus will. And um, like I said, they begin to build a bond. Um, and the people that the compound was telling David not to trust this guy. And David believed that God sent this guy to him to um, for him to save. And he was the people was like, why take this risk with this guy? And because um, David responded, because I can turn him. Okay, and so <clears throat> um, the black guy who's in the show, he's a lawyer. He's a Harvard graduate. And so when they found out that they was investigating them, they was asking this black guy, what charges can they file against them? And so because David had married one of the girls, I think when she was like 12 or 14, uh, I think her name was Michelle. He had a child by Michelle um, that they could get him on, you know, those type charges or whatever. And so David convinced Thibodeau to marry Michelle. And so he did. And that was to try to cover up whatever law they had broken. Um, also researched that Tipido, remember he's one of the survivors. He wrote in his book, by April 1993, David had had sexual relations with a total of 15 women and had fathered 17 children with them. So I thought that was... Um, very strange. Among all the other things about David, I think he uh, really was trying to follow God. 
how old was David when he died? I'm not sure how old he was, Brother Samuel. Um, but the show is really, really good. And it, like I said, for all these years, they was telling and reporting that these people killed themselves. And that's a lie. They killed those people. Please go watch the film if you haven't seen it. And so um, episode three opens up with the FBI and ATF swarming the compound. Uh, David comes outside and trying to, tries to stop them and they shoot David. And when they was pulling David back in the house, David said that the fifth seal is opening. Um, again, when I went and watched actual footage to what happened, uh, they did a good job of telling this story to the T. Um, because when shots, they were shooting on both sides and people on both sides were killed during this shootout. And this lasted about 30 minutes. And so before that even happened, you had the camera guy from some news stations trying to find the compound. And he stopped this mailman and asked this mailman, um, where was the compound? And the mailman, I guess, was from the compound because he went straight to the compound and told them that somebody was looking for, you know, them. And he saw a car full of ATF agents. And so um, they got ready because they knew that they was coming. Um, that, um, that news camera guy, he had a camera. He was shooting footage of everything that happened because they reported that somebody from the compound shot at them first, which was a lie. They shot at, the th at those people first. And they didn't even bring any communications uh, with them. They had to tell one of the ATF guys told the um, cameraman to go to his truck and call for help. While they was on the inside at the compound calling the sheriff uh, for help as well. Um, they finally ceased fire. Uh, like I said, people were killed on both sides. Um, then the FBI comes in and takes over and try to negotiate. Uh, and this is just an example of military versus law enforcement. Uh, military they, I mean, put as much force as necessary to prove a point. And law enforcement is supposed to de-escalate. They did not de-escalate uh, this situation. So David calls the radio station to try to tell his stories. His story. They cut the line so that David could not tell his story. So every time the phone rang, it rang to the FBI. Um, the FBI talked to David on the phone. Uh, they held a press conference and this is when they lied about what happened and they saying that they uh, attacked them first. Um, then they actually took the camera from the cameraman and destroyed that footage so that it wouldn't be no evidence of what happened there. So episode four stars off with day three and um the agent who went to the compound to visit them tried to stop them from going in and when they held the press conference they lied again and said that the atf agent was compromised and that um he was working for or you know with David, with the, yeah, with David, and so we don't see too much of him from that point on. And so while while David was on the phone with um, the FBI agent, he asked him for some milk for the kids. He said that because of the stress stress from what was going on, that the women wasn't making milk; they wasn't lactating, and so. They brought them some milk in. Um, and then so David recorded his own video trying to tell what happened and what he believed. And um, they 
did not let anyone see that video that David filmed. Uh, episode five was which was day nine. Remember, this standoff lasted for 51 days. Um, they turned off the lights. When they turned off the, the lights, the milk that they gave them went bad. Um, and they finally turned the lights back on. And so they um, they showed a video of the kids who they David had let some of the kids go. Um, and they showed a video of some of the kids. And one of the ladies who uh, was a parent was still um, inside. And when she saw her child by himself, she asked where his sisters and brothers, where his brothers were. And the father of the two brothers came and picked the other kids up and left the one boy. And so she wanted to, you know, leave so she can go be with her child. And when she was leaving, David told, I don't remember this guy's name, but he told him to leave because somebody had told David that he was drinking. And so David made him leave because no drugs or drinking was allowed on the compound. Day 17, they turned the lights out again and they played loud noises to all night so they would be sleep deprived. And um, during this time, while the lights was off, they was trying to get the generator to work. And they finally got the generator to work. And the guy told David that it, was, it will only probably last about 10 minutes. And so... Um, so David decides to hold a concert and he sung in front of the window, which I thought was very interesting. Um, during this time when episode six began, they relieved the negotiator of his duties. They was getting impatient. And so, and this is when everything went wrong. Um, they sent tear gas into the compound. And then they also made false statements to the media that um, they were under fire. Like I say, lying, what they always do to protect themselves. Um, so once the tear gas uh, started coming in, they put all the women and children in the vault. And they was on the outside saying, why aren't they coming out? Because they had barricaded them in with these tanks. They had the tanks that was um, had knocked some of the sheetrock and walls down where they couldn't get out of the vault. And so uh, they were stuck in there with that tear gas. Um, and when I, like I say, my sister and I discussed this film on yesterday. We actually did a video talking about it. And she has sent messages to us and told us to watch it the day before. And she was talking about she was mad. And when I was watching the film, I understood why she was mad. Because they killed those people in cold blood. Yeah, they lied, Luana. They lied and was trying to make us... They was painting a picture of these people a certain way and saying that they uh, kill, killed themselves. Let me read what Brother Samuel had to say. Even though I wasn't in the nation at the time, I remember feeling it was a setup to manipulate the public thought, thought process because they wanted to follow the same protocol to attack the nation of Islam. I also heard that they murdered Jim Jones and created a story of mass suicide. And I think that's what they was trying to do. You know, a lot of people had heard about Jim Jones and them um, killing themselves. So they wanted people to think that these people was going to kill themselves. And I also remember Steve finding a cell phone and calling his sister, telling his sister that, if they uh, that we are not going to kill ourselves, we have no plans on killing ourselves. So, um, you know, he wanted that to be out there. But again, that's just one person, his family member. They had no way of communicating with 
the um the media or the public. And it, it, it's disturbing that these people have that much power to abuse. Uh, they didn't want to talk. They had pressure on them from the people from Washington telling them they want to end. And that's when they went in there and used excessive force on those people. And it's just sad. All these years, they had us thinking that these people killed themselves when they really murdered those people in Waco, Texas. Um, I, th I got the number of people that actually died in there. Let me go to my notes. So during the entire standoff, 37 people uh, left the compound since the whole standoff began. Uh, 95, 95 people was inside when this attack began. Uh, I think it was 78 people. I, don't, I can't find it in my notes. 78 people died during this attack, and 25 of them were children. So, what do you all think about this? Like, right, think about all the things that the government gets away with and is never held accountable. Who's going to hold the government accountable? Like, I feel some type of way after watching this. The, the other show I want you all to watch and I, so we can discuss is the platform. My sister, every, <laughs> every other day, she texts us these movies she want us to watch and we discuss them. And so she and I also discussed the platform yesterday. So I'll do another video talking about the platform. It's on Netflix. Definitely go and watch the platform so we can discuss that uh, next time. Do y'all have any questions or comments? Uh, make sure you all are staying safe out there. Make sure you wash your hands, stay at home. Make sure you're wearing your mask. Um, what are you doing to boost your immune system? You need to make sure you're exercising. Uh, I'm drinking Tahitian Noni juice, a couple ounces a day to boost my immune system. Uh, I suggest you... Um, do some type of regimen to boost your immune system, especially during this pandemic. Um, any other questions or comments, you guys? I thank you all so much for tuning in. Again, this live feed is brought to you by idressfabulous.com and mynonajuice.com. Thank you all for tuning in. See y'all next time. Bye-bye.